these were uh, the result of my uh, study as a painter and also from my um, studies in art history and painting history. Um, the gesture has a, an interesting place in the study of painting. Um, very much like a, a signature, they identify um, a specific artist. Um, you can, I think one can look at a painting of Van Gogh or a painting of Velasquez and only seeing the brush strokes recognize the artist. Um, these gestures are very much my gestures. They're uh, scaled to my physical um, reach at a particular moment in time. Uh, the large gestures are my arm reach, uh, although I do make large brushes myself to, uh, to create the large brush strokes and gestures. Scale became very important to me, um, particularly after I saw a retrospective of uh, the work by an artist named Barnett Newman. Um, scale for me, for these paintings, is important because I wanted very much to have uh, the viewer have a relationship with the painting. And I find when the paintings feel very big that uh, the viewer's relationship is more intimate. You're, you are inside the painting. And when a painting is very small, uh, I find myself feeling outside the painting looking in. Painting um, is pretty much a figure ground situation. Um, the canvas shape or the canvas being the ground and the, the painting on it being the figure. I found that problematic for a number of reasons. I, um, I didn't like the shape of the rectangle. Uh, I didn't like the historical reference to a door or window or mirror. For me, that um, placed the viewer looking into another world and I wanted uh, my paintings to have a relationship with the viewer in their own space. Um, additionally, I didn't like the shape as an object. Uh, it wasn't, uh, I wanted the gesture to become the painting and the painting to become the gesture. Also, when a painting is within a rectangular frame, typically the dialogue or the, um, the conversation within the painting all takes place within that, uh, that shape, that rectangular shape. But because I've gotten uh, rid of that shape and the, and the painting is free to be any shape it needs to be or wants to be, uh, it has more of a dialogue with the space around it, with the architectural space and becomes um, active uh, and, energi and energizes that space. Yeah, color is clearly uh, very important to my work. Um, I don't think of color in a political way or a symbolic way. Many years of evolution tells us that certain colors um, can mean something to us. I, I used to lecture on color and talk about how green meant a, a certain light green meant buds on trees and new grass, which I think to us just uh, at the core of us could feel like hope and food and you know spring and um, so for for me basic colors have um, they evoke certain feelings and I try to be very in touch with those feelings and um, sometimes I play the color against the form that I'm making and sometimes I try to marry them together. I'm looking for a very powerful initial reaction um, with the painting. So I, I want the gestalt of the painting to be the first thing you notice. Um, a big, bold color uh, that um, takes over the whole environment or the whole field of your vision. And a broad statement, a broad gesture that uh, pushes and pulls in a very powerful way. Um, then, uh, after you've gone through that experience, for me, the next experience is realizing that there are many nuances within the painting, uh, counterpoints, um, smaller gestures that may, um, that may offer you other experiences. Um, so I, I need to be an inventor. I need to be an engineer. There are a lot of the problems that I needed to solve in order to make these paintings 
um, are engineering oriented, I suppose. Uh, it's interesting. I was trained to be a, uh, an oil painter and uh, a traditional oil painter. I, I studied with in, in the academy at the Art Students League mostly. Um, but when I came up with the concept of making these paintings, um, it was a very long, difficult process to learn how to make a painting like this. Um, the materials wouldn't hold up. Uh, I couldn't afford to make paintings like this with um, oil paint or the, the acrylic paint that you might get out of a tube. Some of these paintings um, require over 20 gallons of paint. Uh, I, um, I struggled with some early processes as a student. I worked at a boat building um, company in Michigan and um, we used epoxides and I tried to make some of these forms out of epoxy. Uh, it worked for the small paintings but for me uh, they corrupted the color, they were very brittle and they were very heavy but um, also they, as they cured sometimes they overheated and caught fire. Uh, so I abandoned that and it took about seven years to uh, really learn how to make uh, the paintings the way I'm making them now. They're extraordinarily light. Um, I use micro bubbles to uh, make them stiffer and lighter. I make my paintings on the floor. I make all my paint and I make my brushes. Um, I make everything from scratch, uh, but I don't buy anything that I use at an art supply store. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I make everything myself from scratch. I make my paint from, my, from scratch and I make my brushes from scratch. Uh, the brushes, um, some of them are six feet long. I have a, an eight foot wide brush that I'm, uh, I can't wait to get wet. I haven't used that one yet. Um, I make the brushes out of a lot of different materials. Um, sometimes I, I use uh, materials from mops or um, uh, dust mops that you would use on a, an industrial floor, um, or I use brooms. Um, I almost never use painters' brushes. <laughs> um, I've used uh, old sweaters, <laughs> and sometimes I make paintings just using my hands. Uh, but they're very, it's very physical making these paintings on the floor. I don't put handles on the brushes. Uh, I'm down on my knees on the, on the floor making these paintings um, and at the end of the day I'm, I'm totally exhausted and, and sweaty and uh, very, very tired. Yeah, the creation is very much like a dance performance. I, um, I'm extending my body to the maximum and uh, um, it's moving through a very heavy, viscous fluid. Uh, so um, the the motions are um, are it's very physical. It, it's a very physical act to make these paintings because I want the paintings to um, engage the viewer uh, in that way too. Um, I'm hoping that my dance invites you, you know, the viewer to dance. I. I want these to be uh, a, a human, the mark of the human hand, uh, of a human being. Um, I'm kind of put off by, uh, you know, so many images being seen on a computer screen or digitally. I wanted to create something that um, celebrated humanity, actually. Uh, so I like, I like a, a, a work of art that is going to um, be uh, intimate and uh, permanently uh, record the mark of a human hand.